from Austin, Texas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Dell World 2015, brought to you by Dell. Now your host, John Furrier. Of Silicon Angle, this is our flagship program, theCUBE. When we go out to the events and extract the signal noise, I'm uh, with, here with Mark Lewis, former CTO of EMC, now the CEO of Formation Data Systems, a hot startup funded by Dell Ventures. Coincidentally, all this stuff's kind of coming together, and you have no knowledge of whatsoever what happened. <laughs> no, no, it was a surprise to me, but um, you, know, you, you can clearly see why it would happen in the market today, John. You know, it's, uh, there's an incredible amount of, I think, uh, need for you know, consolidation in certain industries and certain things, and, and getting scale and, and whatnot. Dell clearly wanted to be a bigger enterprise yeah. player, and you know, I think it's a big move for them, and I think it's really cool. And you also have experience working at Silver Lake, working with KKR with Mar Marius Haas, going to be on at yeah. one o'clock. You also were the CTO at EMC, so you know the wall of roadmap, you know the inner workings, you also ran and booted up EMC Ventures in California, which was a huge success with props to you. I always like to highlight that great, great uh, job you've done there. So you've seen a lot of the inner workings from a company standpoint at EMC, the technology, the products, out in the market as a VC, you've looked at all the investments, you looked at Nasira, Big Switch, all, the, all that stuff. What is your take here? Because there's a lot of products being jammed into one. EMC had product overlap to begin with. Now Dell yeah. has product overlap. Technology is shifting, as Michael Dell's pointing out. What's your take on this? Yeah, it's uh, a lot of moving parts. So they're going to have a lot to, to get their arms around in all the moving parts. You have software, you have security, you have uh, NYSERA, new things, older things. Um, if I break it down to kind of the one big thing that I took away was Dell really wanted to have, be a force in the enterprise and wanted to have that diversity. And I think there's going to be great things and good things and things that'll have to you know, get, get shook out. But, but the one really thing it does, it's very hard to build an enterprise business from scratch. And I think they did a, you know, I think that's a transformational move to get them there. And yeah, I think there's a lot of things that are going to have to work out. And the one other thing I would say though is that is that when you look at companies like ours and companies that are trying to do next generation stuff, um, the Dell EMC gets them a bigger company and more breadth and clearly gets Dell more enterprise focus. It does not get them the, the revolutionary technology, say, to go up against Amazon or go against the next generation of technology. That still becomes a need that they have to have to move forward. So I saw Brian Gallagher, uh, who you know, at, at Amazon reInvent Lab two weeks ago, yeah. weeks ago, and I had a cocktail with him, it was kind of late at night, and I said, because he's now doing all the GevOps stuff at EMC. Brian Gallagher at, at, at AWS, now come on. That, that's like this, like, are you swimming <laughs> upstream? What do you feel like? A salmon trying no. to get home, I mean, it's a hard, that was a hard nut to crack for EMC to get into that DevOps game, and with Amazon crushing it, um, he, you know, he and I were just having that casual conversation. I mean, it's a lot of work, to your point. Here with one move, Dell gets an, an amazing set of management capabilities, yep. uh, HR, and, and HR people. people. So it's kind of like a salary <laughs> cap problem, right? I mean, you've got Jeremy Burton, you've got Pat Gelsinger, Joe Tucci's kind of going away, you've got Goulden, Howard Elias, Gallagher, I mean, the list goes on and on. I um, mean, you know the management team, it's all a lot of senior people there. Mm -hmm. I mean, some companies would love to have just two or three of those guys. It's so gonna, a, is that a problem or they, Well, they clearly got a great team, they have to figure out how to organize that team. Um, the thing that I've always done, I've done a lot of startup technologies and whatnot, and one thing I learned early on was that go to market is a lot harder than people think. You know, technology in some ways can be very easy to build. And, and go to market is tough. When you have, if you're a network company and you try to sell storage, or if you're, com you know, computing companies for a long time have had trouble selling storage against. Cisco's doing a good job doing storage. it. Oh yeah. Well I mean, Jim <laughs> McHugh, UCS, no one thought they'd do anything in the server UCS business. did well, but so far Cisco's foray into storage has been what I would consider to be less than stellar. Well, on the storage front. Yeah, Servers. it's tough. And my point is that it's, it's tough. They did a good job with UCS, they made it, and they built it ground up. Tough job. Um, so, so that's why I think the secret to this acquisition is really the go-to-market capabilities of EMC. Well, let's it's talk about the pre-existing market. VCE, for instance. 
I mean, does that like, who's going to buy VBlock? Yeah, uh, you know, I guess I have a unique opinion there. VCE is kind of an artificial solution. It, it, it was, okay, you know, you always wonder how much new customers it really attracted. There was, there obviously was an affinity there, group there that bought. Um, it's hard to say how much of that revenue would not exist uh, you know, if you just had the three companies. So, so I got to ask you the question straight up. Is this the end of the federation as we know it? I mean, um, dismantling as we speak, or is it going to be a... Well, I, I, guess, I guess merely because of the fact of, of this amount of change, it's the end of the federation as we know it, but there could be the federation two, there could be a number of things. Uh, hey, I Star saw Wars, Virtue Stream Star got Wars spun out. Star a new director, this, yeah. you know, J.J. Yeah, so Abrams. It could be, yeah. yeah, it could be federation the next generation, uh, <laughs> federation the sequel. We got all sorts of things that could so be, I guess. Classic federation. Let's talk about the, um, the glue. Glue yeah. is a critical part for these deals. Glue and technology standpoint. You need middleware, you need database, a lot of these things. Storage needs to be operationalized to be more internet of things friendly. A lot of stuff you're, you know, you're doing. What is the glue to hold all this together? Or is it simply the play as, hey, we're one big portfolio of Lego blocks, Mr. Customer, you put it together. Well, I think you have to, uh, I, I assume Michael will take this in a, in a couple of phases. The first is, is yeah, how do we put the pieces together and, and come up with a kind of a rational set of building blocks and rational set mm -hmm. of components? And, and that becomes phase one. Just give me a complete solution or give me the, the pieces. And then more and more it has to be, how do I integrate that solution? How do I, how do I have a more competitive together than, than not, right? Clearly, clearly I think for these existing environments, classic legacy client server computing, it's going to get more and more about complete solutions uh, as, as that, that market actually starts to wane a bit. Talk about Dell Ventures because, you know, Jim Lucier I've known from Norwest, great guy. Um, now he's heading up to Dell Ventures. You were one of the first investment, not one of the first Early. But, yeah, they, but you, they did an early investment right. in your company and right. also did the B round. What's it like working with Dell Ventures and Jim Lucier and team there? I, I have to say, because I, I, I will even um, mock my own self a little bit here. Um, we had nothing at EMC Ventures that, that competed with what I saw with Dell Ventures in the sense of support and, and access to customers. Uh, we have, Formation has its first booth here at Dell World, uh, courtesy of Dell, courtesy of Dell Ventures. They built the solutions showcase, offered us a space, uh, and when you're a poor, struggling startup, that's a, that's a big deal. Um, I love the so, line of the keynote, beg, borrow, and steal. Yeah, the guys are running a billion dollar, a billion uniques, oh, they still beg, borrow, and steal. You're beg, in borrow, that, and steal. You're in that phase, you've, you're in a startup, yeah. formation data systems, you're beg, borrow, and steal, but you're on your B round. I mean, you're rich yeah. compared to us in terms of cash flow, money in the <laughs> bank, uh, well funded. Um, no, but seriously, you are at that stage now where you have to start beg, borrowing, and stealing, if you will, because now you have to deal with the noise of the EMC acquisition, so where does formation fit in this? So, Is there a strategic deal in there in the works? Oh, I, Are you independent I, I, of Dell? I have no, I, no idea of that, but I got to tell you, as the, the Dell of EMC ship. deal, personally speaking, the Dell EMC deal is the best thing that ever happened to formation. Best thing ever. Why? Because it signaled to the entire world um, that a change was coming. And, and so it sent this big message to me that if EMC was growing 20 to 30%, storage was still on fire in the legacy environments, not declining yeah, yeah. year over year and quarter over quarter, that deal, this deal never would have happened. There never would have been active investors. There never, it never would have happened. It happened because the market is maturing Good. and the legacy market's going away. I got to so. ask, so I, that's a great point. I want to go to another point. So you know the Cube, we love to talk to people and get the insight and share with the audience. And one of the things we did early on was we saw the big data movement, we saw the DevOps movement, and that, that became now history in the cloud. But the DevOps movement showed that the developers are in charge, right? The developers are driving the bus. Right. They're dictating agile, you know, continuous uh, right. in, in, innovation. Now, what you're talking about with the, sh the shifts in the markets on the enterprise side, the customer's in charge. So for the first time, they're signaling to a shift where the customer, so the in, insight on in the cube this week, mm -hmm. and last week, certainly at Grace Hopper and other places, is that the vendors aren't in charge anymore, the customers are. Meaning, I want agile solution deployment. I want to, I got to provide solutions. Well, so it, are the customers in charge? And, 
and John, the reason they're so insistent about these needs is the, it's not the vendor in charge, it's not the customer in charge, it's their users are in charge. And so the head of IT or the VP of operations Love that. is not going to get another chance to support their customers if they don't build modern systems inside because the shadow of IT will build, they will go to AWS. So you and see so, this market as a one shift moment. You, if, you're, if you're tacking, you got to make that ready about, turn that boat. If you're a VP of IT right now, you, you, can, you have to stop dictating what your users use and start asking. You have to make them real customers because they have an alternative and, and that's going to get harder and harder. As DevOps forms inside yeah. of large enterprise, the DevOps guys have a choice. Yeah. They will go to AWS if they can't get it solved inside. Our argument with formation is, you can build the storage systems that AWS has yeah. on premise, you can stay in control. And that's that, what and that rings true important. with Michael Dell was saying about the world could be a better place is ultimately the, that's going to be the less contest, contentious and more kind of mellow, chill environment for the user if they're happy. Yeah, but it, it's, it's about, your, if you remember the old BYOD, bring your own device era. After a while, once the CI, CEO started carrying an iPhone, saying that Blackberries were mandatory no longer became an option. And that whole model of, of control changed from IT to users, yeah. users in the company. And that's happening now with enterprise IT. DevOps is mm -hmm. moving into those big companies and IT either needs to support DevOps or DevOps will go outside. Okay, so I got to ask you the forward looking question. As someone who's been through a lot of cycles of innovation, inflection points, up and down yeah. cycles, you, you and I both lived through some cycles, <laughs> yes. good and bad. We are in a good cycle right now, obviously, you know, the bubble conversation is more on the consumer side. There is some rationalization going on within the public markets and private markets. You heard Michael Dell talking about yeah. it. But putting that aside, what does the future look like? What are, what are you excited about? I mean, do you see this as a once in a lifetime situation? I mean, well, what? I'm so excited about you know, what we call the last time it was on the Cube, we called it kind of the second game of the double header. I am so excited that you know, Amazon and Google and many of these companies have seeded this new era of computing, and that doesn't happen very often. You know, that's a 30 year <laughs> change, right? And what I'm really excited about is it's, it's it, the first kind of game was played with the cloud natives and all the new people adopting, but you have this huge mass market that is in legacy right now that's going to have to move over the next five years. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be incredible change, and people aren't going to- With a lot of disruption. Ton of disruption. And if I can mention one, my only peeve in storage right now is we saw this great Wired article you know, about Walking Dead and how all the legacy yeah, vendors and stuff. Yeah, it was a horrible article. And, 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 and that was, the front part of it, it was you know, hyperbolic but a accurate. But the back part of it drove me crazy because they said that Flash was somehow disruptive. That's what drives me crazy in storage. Flash, make this clear. Flash is not disruptive. These little technologies are not disruptive. What is disruptive is the movement to software-defined technologies and the move to this third generation, you know, cloud DevOps-based technologies. It has nothing to do with these lower level things and that's causing okay. a huge confusion right, in so the storage. All right, so that's a good point. So these point releases are these incremental technologies, all grand and flash is pretty yeah. damn incremental. So that being said, it's a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal. But, but everybody's it, got it. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, has got it, I, I got buy it, that, I'm with you on the, I'm not no going to argue. because I, I agree with you. Okay. But let's talk about Internet of well, Things. Part of the reason why it's not disruptive is because the guys, the new entrants, can't achieve escape velocity because everybody's got it. Right, and right? it's it maybe one company's 10% better than another. Who leaves EMC right. for 10%? You've got to be 10X better. Yeah, Dave, be welcome 10X. to the set, Dave. Just came back from lunch. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Dave. I'm sorry, Lewis here. Good I'm out you. jumping in. Good to see you, man. Good Good to see you. You. Dave, Dave, first of all, <laughs> you know, you've got to ask for permission to talk. You know, <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. You know, back to so my point I was trying to get is Internet of Things. How big is that? Because Michael Dell's leading with that on his keynote, and we are seeing massive disruption with IoT. I, th I, think, it's, I think it's absolutely huge and enormous and is going to create you know, this, this other wave. It just like storage has created waves of big data, but economics drive that wave, right? The internet of things will happen when the economics of IT let it happen. And that's why, you know, we want to make storage less expensive so people store more stuff. And that's the way it works. It's an economic based system. But, it, but is IOT disruptive? In the sense that, it, you know, it's going to create, get to kill old players and 
create huge new businesses or is it the guy who owns the parking meter is going to benefit from IoT? So I don't see IoT as disruptive. I see IoT as a huge wave, bigger than any other wave perhaps we've ever seen. But I'm not sure it's well, disruptive. Well, like everything else, I think that that it will benefit people. People will have new advantages. Was the PC disruptive? They'll take advantage yes. of it. Hugely disruptive. You, you can argue they were building on many computers and networks. I think there'll be some losers. I think I think client server IT uh, computing is going to be the loser in all of this. You mean, when you move to DevOps and agile yes. computing, you need cloud, cloud and as a service delivery. Real cloud. I mean, it can be private cloud, real but it cloud. has to be real cloud. Real cloud, yes, <laughs> we're talking real cloud. You need real did cloud. You <laughs> did you tell us what real cloud looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Real cloud is real system. It is not VMware. It is not client server computing. It is not the same old thing with a marketing label on it. It is as a service, on demand, instantly available, you know, API driven computing. It is the things you have with AWS. It is, it is the fact that if I want storage, I can get it, I get it immediately, user driven. All of that should be dynamic, everything. The, the only thing that does, it doesn't have to be public though. That's, that's, so that's what this, we're is trying this, Is this a good time to be a CIO right now? Or a bad time? I, well, it's a changing time. In all disruptions, you're going to have winners and losers. The winner CIOs will be the ones that figure out ways to embrace the disruption, start up new data centers, do things that prepare themselves, and the CIOs that lose will be the guys that stick their head in the sand, like always, right? And, and uh, say, oh, no, no, it's, I, you know, right, I so love I got, my sand, I love my so sand. So I got to get your take on just the economics, because you know, you're a Silver Lake kind of guy, you know the players over there. Um, numbers, I mean, I think they make sense. Cost of capital is really low right now mm -hmm. in the private equity market, their private company. Cost of capital is good. I mean, the management team is super strong at Dell. They could probably make a good run at this. What's your gut feeling on the numbers, the debt, all that bullshit conversation? You know, I, as you say, it's very smart individuals, and I'm very confident that if, if Michael and Egon and those guys have gone through this, th this makes sense. You know, they're, they're not going to do something that, that doesn't, and Plus I have the a EMC great, has a good track great deal of respect at managing yeah. corporate governance. Yeah, David Goulden, rock, yeah. financial rock star. Yeah. So, so they, they have some of the best minds there. Um, and, and that's why I always say the duality of this is, I think it's great for customers, I think it's going to be good economically for a lot of things. There's, there's obviously going to be impact in, in consolidation and, and overlap, but good overall. But the one point I try to make is, is you just don't take these two big existing vendors and create innovation out of nowhere. All right. Mark, Doesn't thanks happen. for doing a drop by, a fly thanks. by on the lunch segment Great here. Great to see you guys. Um, see this you. is our CUBE lunch cast. <laughs> Just to walk on from the floor. Former CTO of EMC, now the CEO of Formation Data Systems, Mark Lewis, formerly a managing director, ran EMC Ventures, which actually was instrumental in the Nasira deal, among others. Uh, congratulations and welcome, welcome to uh, Austin. This is Dell World live coverage on theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.